All right, Fred has a great comment here. He, he says, uh, Jimmy, can you please make a video showing why the King James Bible is the Word of God versus all others? Also, people say King James was a Mason, as he can be seen in some pics wearing the Masonic apron. I do not know if these pics are legit, but I want more ammunition, which explains why it is so. Also, if you have any info defending King James, please provide it. Thanks. Okay, so uh, I saved this particular image right here. This is from the 1611 King James Bible. So if you've got one, you can open up your book and find that image. And uh, So let's zoom in here. You'll see right there is a handshake. And people will say that's the Masonic handshake. And they claim that this is uh, evidence that uh, King James was a Mason. And uh, the reality of it is this is a sim uh, this symbolizes the marriage between Adam and Eve so uh, it's um, it's really astonishing the links that these people will go to to try to make King James out to be a you know the devil if you will uh, in fact King James he didn't even write the King James Bible, he commissioned 54 of the greatest scholars to spend seven years together translating the Bible perfectly into the English language. So uh, that obviously that upset the Catholic Church, and they tried to kill him. That's why we have remember, remember the 5th of November in reference to 1605. All right, so um, nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, the he's... You know, they got pictures of him wearing a Masonic apron. I don't buy any of that. They say he's a homosexual. I'm not buying any of that. Um, even, even if all that were true, it does not dismiss the Bible. See, they can't attack the Bible because it's perfect. So they, fought, they try to find other ways to attack the Bible. And by making up these wild stories about King James. Okay, that's what it, King James wasn't perfect. You're not perfect. And the people that are ripping on King James, they ain't perfect either. But the Bible is perfect. All right. And so let's let's get into the Bible. Oh, now, there's one thing that sticks out to me. Uh, you, you remember uh, when Jesus, uh, he says, go up to the feast. It's not my time to go up yet. Okay, so he is saying, he tells them, uh, Go ye up unto the feast. I go not up yet unto the feast, for my time is not yet full come. And uh, and then we read shortly after, uh, you know, because the Jews are looking for him and so on and so forth. And, and right there, here we go. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Okay, so he does go up to the feast. But here he's saying, I go not up yet unto the feast. All right, so let's compare this to uh, your other, you know, your Vatican-approved Bible versions, Bible perversions. And I like to look at the main ones. I mean, you can dig through all these. There's 50 of them here. You go up to the feast. I am not going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. So the ESV makes him a liar right there, because he did go up to the feast. ESV says, I am not going up to this feast. Yeah, but he goes to that feast. <laughs> it just made him a liar. It's unbelievable. You don't have a problem with that? If you don't have a problem with that, I got a problem with you, right? Let's see, the NS. N-A-S-B, I am not going up to this feast, yeah, but he goes up to the feast. And we read it six verses later that he goes up to the feast. You go to the festival, I'm not going to this festival. Again, N-I-V, making Jesus out to be a liar. Let's see what the N, the not King James Version says. You go up to the feast, I am not going up to this feast. Yeah, again, the New King James Version follows all these other Vatican-approved Bible perversions. It's incredible, right? So uh, what else do we got there? Uh, even the RSV. Okay, so 
you see how they leave out one crucial word. The NLV got it right. I'm not going up yet, right? The King James Version. I am not, I go not up yet unto this feast. Not go, he says, go now. I don't go yet, but he does go. All right, so that's one that's one example, and I think, uh, you know, we could look at, uh, you know, another thing that I like to point out, which really boggles my mind, is, you know, the word Lucifer, you know, I think Ozzy Osbourne, he sings songs about Lucifer, you hear all these de uh, death metal, heavy metal bands talking about Lucifer, you know, and it's, it's Lucifer is probably one of the most popular words in the Bible, Everybody's heard of Lucifer, yet Lucifer is mentioned one time in the entire Bible. It's Isaiah 14, 12. But let's look at these other Vatican-approved Bible perversions. All right, so the ESV takes out the word Lucifer. If you read the ESV, there is no mention of the word Lucifer. Doesn't that concern you at all? Right, and uh, again, the NASB, no mention of Lucifer at all. NIV, no mention of Lucifer at all. They take out Lucifer. And why do they do that? Well, number one, Lucifer is a clue to who Mystery Babylon is in Revelation 17. Okay, because Lucifer is a Latin word. And it's a proverb concerning the king of Babylon. And I say it's a clue because it gives us a clue to who Mystery Babylon is today. Because there is only one country in the entire world that speaks Latin as its native tongue. And that's Vatican City, right? So they remove that, then they remove the clue to who Mystery Babylon is in Revelation 17. Also, NIV says, morning replaces it and calls it the morning star. So essentially, the NIV is saying Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, they're saying Lucifer is the morning star. But what's the Bible say about the morning star, right? You're probably familiar with this, I'm sure. But um, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify and do these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Right, so they replaced Lucifer and put in a title for Jesus, right? Okay, and so what else can we look at here? And yeah, not, you know, there's a lot of examples here. Um, I might have to do another video and just kind of go over some some different examples. But you see here, uh, of course, you know, Jesus says, uh, "Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my." words will never pass away here in Matthew 18 verse 11 for the Son of Man is come to save that which is lost so let's look at what the other Vatican approved Bible perversions say right and the ESV the ESV the ESV is not even mentioned here because why because they removed it that's why that's why you don't see it. NIV says, and the survey says, nothing. They've removed it. Why would they remove? For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gather some more stuff and do another because uh, this is an important topic here, to show you how terrible these Vatican-approved Bible perversions are. And they not only are removing the verses and changing words around, but they're changing doctrine. They're changing the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to show that.